Midwinter in a small Hungarian town. 50-year-old widow Countess Elizabeth Bartery orders one of her many servant girls to be held down and burnt with red-hot irons. The girl will not survive. According to the record books, Elizabeth Bartry is the most prolific female killer ever, ordering the deaths of over 600 young women. She will also go down in legend as Countess Dracula, a vampire who bathed in the blood of virgins to stay forever young. So where's the evidence for these incredible stories? Or is this just a bloody tale? Hungary in 1610 was a kingdom divided. The south occupied by the Turks, the north run by rich nobles. Here the poor lived as serfs, near slaves to their masters. Today, Hungary's National Museum holds precious relics from that time. Amongst them, hidden from public view, is a portrait of the most famous of the great Bartery family, the bloody countess herself. Now, this is the storage room for paintings. There's centuries of oil and canvas here. And right at the back is the portrait of Elizabeth Bartery. The first impression when I look at this is this is a classic aristocratic portrait. Her face, her face doesn't seem troubled at all. There's no sign of the brutal torture of the bloody killer. So you'd really have to use a lot of imagination to suddenly put her in this torture scenario. In fact, the notion that this countess was a real life vampire sounds more like hammer horror than Hungarian history. Time to investigate. Elizabeth Bartery was born into immense wealth. She married a powerful count, and when he died in 1604, Bartery was left with estates dotted throughout Greater Hungary. She was now the richest and most powerful woman in the land. But today, Elizabeth Bartery's fame doesn't rest on her great wealth or nobility. It rests on her record-breaking serial killing and incredible stories of her bathing in the blood of virgins. But now, I want to see if the evidence for these stories really stacks up. I've heard the castle of Bichka hold some clues. It was once the home of Hungary's top politician, Count George Terzo. In 1610, he heard rumors of strange goings on at Elizabeth Bartery's house, so decided to pay her a surprise visit. Now, this is an absolutely fascinating document. It's written by Count Turzo, and it's to his wife. He talks about, when our people went to where she was living, he says, uh, they discovered a dead girl at the house and another one with wounds and dying from torture. And another one who was imprisoned, who that damned woman was keeping for torture. So, this is incredible. This is something he has seen. He has written it firsthand. And this is the original document right here. OK, we don't quite get bathing in the blood of virgins here, but this is very, very strong. I arrived here suspicious, and I think you have to be with a story like this. The bloody Countess myth could easily have been created later on. But what I've seen suggests the opposite. Compelling contemporary evidence that cites torture and killing. Clearly, there's a very strong case for Elizabeth Bartery to answer. Turn 
Erzo's famous raid on Elizabeth Bartry took place in this village 400 years ago. Today, most of Bartry's alleged house of horrors has disappeared. But historian Dr. Graham Murdoch took me down to what remains, the cellar. Here at the crime scene, Bartry's servants were interrogated and they told some incredible tales about their mistress. She's accused of ordering that some servants were left out in, in the snow, were covered with cold water and left to freeze. And there's a range of other things involving a fire, involving uh, hot metals that are pressed against young girls' flesh. <laughs> some of them were beaten to death. Uh. They give pretty graphic accounts of the treatment that some servants received if they were deemed to have disobeyed their mistress. It's all really gory stuff, isn't it? Yes, you can see where the label Bloody Countess came from. Under torture, four servants admitted being complicit in a prolonged reign of terror. Other witnesses claimed Bartry and Co. had killed hundreds of young women. Just a week later, at Beechka Castle, the accomplices were tried and executed. Yet Bartry, the boss, never faced trial. So why wasn't she tried? Well, they've had a particularly speedy, helpful conclusion from their point of view. They've got out the evidence, they've found the guilty, they've punished them, they've incarcerated Elizabeth. The show is over. Bartry was locked up for life in her own castle, her land passing to relatives. Coincidentally, many of these same relatives had very close ties to Count Terzo, as did the witnesses at a rigged trial. We know that all those people had something to gain from getting rid of Elizabeth Battery. That must make us suspicious about their motives and about the veracity of the stories which emerged from the trial. So should we distrust the witnesses' claims that Bartry slaughtered hundreds? If we look at the evidence of those who were convicted, they come up with the numbers 30 to 50. So that must be the outside estimate. Graham thinks the record books have it wrong. And so have writers who claim Bartry was a real live vampire. And the notion that Elizabeth bathed in blood in some effort to preserve her own beauty or in an attempt to stop the aging process. This has absolutely no foundation in contemporary evidence, but makes for a very good story. The fact that the evidence against Bartry was attained under torture and that she herself wasn't tried means that there are these huge gaps in our knowledge. And where the gaps exist, myths have grown up to fill them. Yet I wonder if we should go even further in our myth-busting. How much of the evidence against the bloody Countess can we really trust? Susanna has found some serious flaws in the case against Elizabeth Bartery. Yet I've seen an eyewitness account of torture in action. To make sense of the conflicting evidence, I'm heading to the Hungarian National Archives. Here, historian Dr. Gabor Varkonyi has trawled hundreds of testimonies from the Bartery case. Gabor, how are you doing? I'm Joe. Hi. Hi, Joe. It's led him to a startling conclusion. Well, I think she was innocent because the historical person of Elizabeth Bartory According to mine and, and, uh, and some colleague of, uh, colleague of mine opinions, uh, wasn't this evil figure. Let me show you uh, something. What kind of instrument is it? It doesn't look pleasant. I'm going to guess it's a, it's a oh. torture device. Uh, this instrument came from the uh, Medical Museum of Hungary. Okay. And, and this is a healing instrument. This instrument is exactly used uh, to burn the wounds stop the bleeding. Gabor believes much of the torture mentioned by witnesses 
was healing. She wasn't killing these servants, but trying to save them. And what about Count Torzo? Because when he arrives at Battery's home, he finds one girl dead and another dying. I mean, surely that's pretty damning evidence. We don't know the cause. Why was that girl dying? Because of illness? But nobody asked her what, uh, what happened with her. Uh, there was no testimony of this person, and it's very, very strange things in this case that the star witness is missing. <laughs> Instead, the evidence came from two key sources, Bartory's accomplices and independent witness testimonies. So here are the famous testimonies. Gabor discovered the most damning testimony came from seven of Bartory's oldest servants. He thinks the bloody Countess rumours started with them. I think if, um, if someone tried to create a conspiracy around Elizabeth Bartory, probably these seven people tried something. Once the gossip was out, everyone wanted to believe it. Terzo could now remove a powerful local rival, whilst Bartory's relatives could seize her old land. But this still leaves the question of the accomplices and their confessions. The confessions of them uh, were taken by torturing. They were uh, pulled and, and spinned and burned and in a very, very uh, strong pain, just confessed what the, what the investigators wanted to hear. You don't think because of the torture, you just don't think it can be reliable? Yes, I think so. But do you really think she was completely innocent? Do you not think there was some torture, some killing, some brutality, maybe not 650, but do you really believe it? I believe in it. According to Gabor and others, this was a monumental stitch-up. Illness, early deaths and cruel beatings, all common among servants, were used to paint a picture of a monster. And Bartory was never given a chance to defend herself. Clearly these were brutal times, however, if Gabor is right, and this whole story, this incredible case of Elizabeth Bartory, is one bloody tale that's been misleading and fooling historians for centuries. Brand New Bloody Tales investigates Europe's dark arts next Monday night at 8. Stay tuned for a nail-biting air crash investigation premiere.